if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. The first thing I want to say is just give a quick shout out to a photographer, a fine art photographer called Tim Layton and uh, I've discovered him recently on YouTube, he's one of my subscribers and uh, I was trawling through his videos on his YouTube channel and they really are good, um, good videos on there. A lot of it's large format photography, uh, medium format photography as well, a lot of darkroom stuff. So I'll put a link in the description in this video now and uh, after this have a little look at Tim's stuff because he's, he's doing some really good stuff there, very experienced photographer. So let's crack on with this video anyway. Um, I've been commissioned to take some photographs of tulips from a friend of mine and here's the tulips here. And his wife loves tulips and uh, he's asked me if I'd be able to take some photographs, black and white photographs of tulips and uh, make him a print in the darkroom. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Hopefully I can deliver. So the setup I've got is pretty easy. It's, uh, it's just window light setup. I've got the background here, which was a white piece of card and I've stained it with coffee just to give it a, a darker, if you like, a background, a little bit of brush effect on there as well. And also this white piece of card, which is, um, reflecting light back up into the tulips from the skylight above me. I'm going to be shooting it on the Mamiya 645 and I'm going to be loading it with some Ilford Pan F plus 50. Now I've heard that this film is a really sharp film so let's see how it works. I haven't tested the film for any speed ratings or anything so hopefully I can uh, I can wing it and get some get some good shots. It's the only roll I've got, so I can't do any tests with it. I'm just going to use it on this on this project now, and I'm also going to be developing it in PhotoSpeed's FD10. This is quite a cheap and cheerful developer. I've used it before, and I've been impressed with the results. So this is the developer that I'm going to be using. So let's crack on. The first thing I've got to do is a little bit of flower arranging because I've got these straight out of the supermarket today. And there's loads of green, and I just want to. I just need to trim it down a little bit. Now I'm not really much of a flower arranger, but uh, I'm going to try my best and see what I can come up with. So I'm all pretty set up now, ready to go. The film is inside the camera. I've already cut the tulips back as best as I could. I'm not a flower arranger, but um, they look all right to me. There's just a couple of little tiny bits on these tulips that I need oh, that I need to sort out. Just a couple of dead bits. So I need to turn them around because I don't want you know I don't want any any dead parts of the flower in the, in the photographs at all whatsoever. And uh, the camera, uh, the film is already inside the camera at the back. And because it's a rated at 50 ISO, this uh, the, uh, speed of the film, I'm going to have to be shooting some longer shutter speeds. So any vibration or any movement is just going to blur the image. So I need to make sure that everything's dead perfectly still, the subject, when I take my photograph. So you can see here, this table's wobbling. I can't have anything like that. And I'm on floorboards as well. So I'm going to have to be very careful when I take these photographs because I don't want any uh, motion blur whatsoever. Now the metering side of things, I'm going to be using my Canon 7D DSLR on, as a spot meter around the brighter areas. And that's where I'm going to be doing my metering. Now it's uh, the, the, the lowest I can go on this camera is ISO 100. Now because I'm shooting a 50 speed film, whatever my metering is, I'm just going to have to cut it down by half and then dial that into the Mamiya. So uh, if my meter reading says it's a 30th of a second, then I'm going to have to put 15th of a second into the, into the uh, Mamiya. So let's see how we get on, take a few shots, change the arrangement around and uh, can shoot the rest of the roll of the film, I suppose. So, so far I've taken eight photographs and uh, I've changed it around a little bit. I've put a 120mm lens on uh, just to get a little bit closer to the tulips. Also changed the tulips around a little bit as well. Um, now what I'm going to do is change, take this background away and use something else that I've found that might look quite interesting. 
this old footstool. Um, it's just got this brown, dark, messy look on the top of it, so uh, I'm going to use that as a background and see what we can come up with. And I'm just slowing the pace down now. I've got a couple more shots left. Um, so I've just put one single red tulip in here, uh, which will look quite dark in black and white. Hopefully this background's gonna work quite nice. And uh, then the last couple of shots, I'm gonna use the 120 mil lens that's sitting on the mirror at the moment, which is a macro lens. And I'm gonna get really close to the tulip and just see how they come out as well. So that's it, I've shot the 15 frames and did a little bit of flower arranging along the way, changed the background a couple of times and uh, all I need to do now is to take the back of the camera off, there's the roll of film inside, there's the film there ready to be developed in the FD10 that I was telling you about earlier on and uh, I'm looking forward to actually getting this cardboard coffee stained um, board out of this room because this room absolutely reeks of coffee at the moment. So uh, let's get that sorted out. Right, let's um, get on with developing this film and hopefully get some really good results. Okay, so I'm in a dark room now and these are the chemicals that I'm going to be using. So we've got our, this is all photo speed chemicals. So we've got our FD10 developer, I've got the stop bath here and I've got the FX20 rapid fixer. So I'm going to make new fresh chemicals just to develop this roll of Ilford Pan F. Uh, this is the developing tank, the spiral which, which the film's going to go on, and a thermometer and a small measuring jug. Okay, so I'm going to get this film inside the tank now uh, before I mix my chemicals up because I want them to be at the correct temperature. So I'm going to get the film inside the tank and uh, I'll turn the cameras back on once I've done that, mix the chemicals, get developing and see what happens. Okay, so the film is nice and safe now inside the tank. I've turned the lights back on. I've got all my chemicals ready to go. Here's the developer, the stop and the fix. They're all fresh using the um, photo speed chemicals that I've got. And the Processing time says four minutes with um, this film developer FD10 for the film and the speed that I'm using. So my timer is sitting up there. Let's pour the chemicals in. Go straight in with the developer. And I've got 800 millilitres, which will cover the medium format neg. And it goes, start the timer, and I'll just agitate now. Five times, three, four, five. Give it a tap, and that one's done. Hopefully, it's now starting to process our film. Agitate that constantly now for a minute. Okay, agitate that pretty much the same way as I did with the film. And that process is all done. And again, I'll reuse the fixer. On the time lapse there, you just saw me mixing other chemicals. That was the old stop and the old fix um, that I put in a separate container. It'll go down a tip once, uh, once I've, I've finished with it. Uh, this is all fresh stuff, so this will be reused as well, apart from the developer, which will be thrown away. Right, let's um, now give this film a wash.
that was sitting there for about five minutes and then ready to see the fruits of my efforts okay so that's all done here's the film moment of truth see how it looks actually I should have given it a little flick but uh, never mind So I suppose you could see from the expression of my face, the negatives weren't quite what I was expecting. Something went wrong with the Pan F50 and uh, yeah, I tried to do some printing and I just couldn't get any decent photographs. So it was back to the drawing board and I pulled out the FP4 and redid the shoot with FP4. And here we have the FP4. Hopefully my face will be a little bit more pleasant than it was in the last uh, Ah, that looks much better. That looks much more better and I'm so pleased this time that I didn't waste any more time taking these photographs and I'm going to be able to get some good prints out of this one. Right, let's um, crack on with some printing. So I'll just show you how I printed that one. Um, pretty simple, nothing, nothing too, uh, too technical or involved, just a little bit of dodging on the white flowers, get a piece of 10 by eight out. And I'm making these um, seven and a half by seven and a half inch square, which I've made my own template for. In goes the paper. weight it down with these little weights and I've got the uh, larger aperture at f8 and it's just a five second projection with roughly around about two and a half seconds of dodging over the flower so let's uh, hopefully we can get a better one this time so off it goes one two about that much and then I'm just going to work on the background a little bit, just a little tiny bit of vignette and I'm just going to raise the um, dodge tool up to the lens. Turn the lens on and just bounce it around the corners, just to bleed, burn the corners in a bit. Not too much like so, and off. And the last thing to do is just make my border, place my insert in. Hopefully this time, I haven't ruined the paper in my hands. And just weight that down as well. A bit fiddly, but it's worth it to get a nice little board around the edge some white light on it. Just three seconds will do. And now it's ready to go into the developer. Stop and then fix. And there's the paper. Let us know what you think of this little camera I'm using for my videos. So just a little extra I thought I'd try it out. Quality is not that great, but I suppose it gets a little bit closer to the action. Now oh, that's looking nice, that paper's better this time. Just let that fix a work in, uh, let the developer now work on it. One tiny, tiny piece of dust I can see on the lily, which is a shame. Never mind. It's the trouble when you're working with uh, dark prints, there's always a chance, or clean prints, I should say, and dark prints, there's always a chance you'll get any tiny, little, tiny piece of dust on the neg or on the paper. 
you're going to see it straight away with the busy print such as a street photography you won't really see it but something like this it sticks out like a sore thumb Now into the wash. So I've just finished the darkroom session and I've done a few prints off camera and uh, I'm quite happy with the results that I've got. I was a little bit disappointed with the Pan F15, not the film itself, but the way I handled it. And uh, I was actually having a conversation with Tim Layton, who I mentioned at the start of this video. Uh, we were talking about testing films and, you know, I should have really tested that film, had a couple of rolls and done some tests with it for my own development process before I started shooting it. But um, hey-ho, I, I gathered that um, what I did was underexposed um, the, the film when I was doing the first shoot. But I changed to the FP4 and things started to work out really well for me. So I've got some nice prints. This one here was actually from, from the Pan F50, one of the underexposed ones, one of the better negatives that I could um, work with. After seeing this, that's when I decided to go and reshoot because I wasn't going to be able to, to work with those negatives. But that's not too bad. Um, and this was the first print that I worked on, which I showed you myself working on. And quite happy with this one as well. And this one here I did, again off camera. Uh, this one I used a little bit of Vaseline, a little bit of glass plate with some Vaseline around the edge just to soften the image. And a little tiny bit of um, do um, dodging as well on the print. So that's quite nice. And this one here, it's quite a dark looking print on one of the um, red tulips. And again, it's quite nice. And this one is the last one I did, which was quite a close up on uh, a bunch of tulips. Uh, I think they was the, yeah, the red ones. And uh, again, that's quite a nice print in itself. I'll put these on my blog and a link to that as well. So if you want to see them, I'll scan them in and put them on the web for you to have a look at. And these are the four prints that I've made from the second shoot with the FP4. You can see these two here was the coffee stain background and these two was the seat stall background that I used. And because I was using the silver reflector to light up the tulips, which worked much better than the white card I was using originally, um, I was spot metering on the tulips. So the background um, was was naturally darker than, than the subject itself. But so uh, you can just about see it here as well, which is uh, quite a nice little touch really, I thought. I'm definitely going to use the Ilford Pan F50 again, but uh, um, before I do so, I'm definitely going to make some tests just to see what the best speed is for me and the way that I develop. That way, I'm not going to I'm not going to go in blind like I did this time. Um, so anyway, guys, I'm going to finish off now. I'm going to drink my nice bottle of beer and go and watch some TV. So I hope you like the video. Please like it and subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch you next time.